An unusual sight on a warm day in May. A house on a quiet street in Manitick in South Ottawa decorated for Christmas. Even snow to complete the holiday scene. If the house didn't catch your eye, the line of huge trailers was hard to miss. It is a Christmas movie. Awesome to be filming a Christmas movie in May where we're not actually freezing our butts off. Um, you can see our fake snow on the ground. It looks much more real on camera. Uh, so this one's called Christmas by the Book. That's our working title. We hope that title stays by the time it gets distributed, but of course these things can always change. Did you get the cast in the chair? Tara Lee Gerhards is the assistant director of the movie. Been one for 10 years. She's a member of an Ottawa crew making a career in a fast-growing film industry in the Ottawa area. I wanted to know more about how she landed in this profession. And I'm very pleased today to say that I am having coffee with Tara Lee Gerhards. Thank you for doing this. No problem. So you were born in British Columbia. I was in Chilliwack. And you came to Ottawa with your family at age nine. That's correct. So you were raised here in the capital. Absolutely. That's a long way from the capital of movie making, Hollywood. Uh, was When did you think or was making movies a dream when you were a little girl? It's funny that you bring that up because uh, recently we were going through a box of old family memorabilia and my mom found this uh, booklet that I had done in grade three. Um, and in, in that booklet, it said, when I grow up, I will work in the movies and be an actress and win an Oscar. And of course it said, what do I dream of? What's my best dream? And it was more sleep. Um, <laughs> and that couldn't be more true today because I am working in movies and we work such long hours that I do dream of having more sleep. Where do you often. think that dream came from when, to write it down at such a young age? Uh, I've just always been pretty dramatic, I think. Uh, dramatic in all senses of the word. Uh, I'm an Aries, so you know it's the god of war. So if you're going to do anything, you might as well do it over the top and do it, do it to the best of your ability. So I think it just it was a natural fit for me. Did you watch a lot of movies as a kid? I did. I watched a ton of movies and I always wrote stories. Um, stories and poetry and I was constantly writing and coming up with uh, different plays and performing those for my parents, like even by the age of four. So did you go into the movies uh, after school, uh, like after secondary? No, I didn't actually. Um, after, after high school, um, I didn't go into secondary school to college right away. I had my son first. Um, what age so was that? I was 21 pregnant, 22 when I had my son. And that's when I decided, well, I better go back to school. And I thought I better have a good, strong foundation. So I actually studied as a law clerk at Algonquin College. And you worked as a law clerk? I did. Yeah? I did. I worked for some nice law firms, actually. Um, Kelly Howard Santini being mm -hmm. one of them, um, McLaren Corlett, and a, f a couple of others, but it really was the death of my soul. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Sitting in a cubicle, typing a lot. It was just not. It, school is one thing because you're researching, and my dad used to always say, Oh, you're like Tara Brockovich. You know, you're going to go out there and save the world or uncover un these impossible stories. And it didn't turn out to be that way. You just end up typing from whatever the lawyer is saying. And it's mm -hmm. it, the school and the work are two different things. But when you decided to go to school, the movie wasn't an option or. Uh, it didn't seem realistic okay. at the time because I had my son um, and it didn't seem as though that was going to be something that would support me and support mm -hmm. me as a single mom um, and raise a family. Okay, so you're, you're a law clerk. When did it strike you that, okay, something's got to give here, I got to change something? Right, so after studying to be a law clerk, I met my daughter's father and we were together for quite some time. Um, and then when my daughter was two, he decided that this wasn't for him and he left. So when he left, that you mean was... being in a family? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, pretty okay. much the day my wedding dress arrived, which was awesome. Oh, So Tara. at that point in time, I was broken. I was just crushed. And I just thought, well, this isn't my life. This isn't supposed to be my life. You've got you two know? children. Yeah. On my own. He declared bankruptcy on the house, the whole shebang. It was just an absolute disaster. <gasps> so I thought, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to live my life like this. I'm going to be happy. And the best thing I could do to show my kids was if you have a dream, chase that dream, no matter what it is. It could be going to the moon. It could be being an actress. My daughter wants to be an actress now. Um, anything, whatever your dream is, do it. So I took off and took some courses to, in New York. And How, how come New York? 
that's where the courses were offered. It was like what kind of courses? It was uh, the courses were put on by the Hollywood Film Institute, and they were doing them at NYU. And the professor is Dove Simons, um, somebody who I followed. It's who Quentin Tarantino um, actually studied under before going off and making his movies. So when I found out that there was a course in New York, not just LA, I was like, oh, I'm taking it. I'm doing it. So it's like, hey, mom, dad, watch the kids. I'm hopping on the train. So you got <laughs> and off we went. It, I mean, it's it's a great story, but I mean, was everybody supportive or do they say, Tara Lee, you're crazy? Uh. Both. They already knew I was crazy, so, <laughs> that, so, that, so that wasn't any big surprise. Uh, my dad and my mom, they're my, my biggest fans. My dad cheers me on no matter what I do. Uh, yeah, he's, he's my biggest supporter. It's like, go chase that dream, go get him, girl. You know, keep working. So was it what you thought? Uh, at first. First, I thought, oh, I'm just going to be able to jump in and start making my own movies right away. That was a dream? Absolutely. Okay. Still is a dream. But uh, it's, that's not realistic. You know, you, you don't know what you don't know until you're in the situation and you're mm -hmm. trying to do it. So I had a friend, Angela Thompson, um, and we started a small company, um, Elevated Angel Productions. And we did a couple shorts. They weren't very good. Um, I hope nobody ever sees them. Uh, and then I started hanging around the other movie sets uh, that were in town here. So there was Zed Filmworks at the time uh, with Robert Menzies and I kept pushing and going on as a background performer, but then I just wouldn't leave. You know, I was like, you need to give me a job. You know, the guy, so I'm gonna keep coming back. I'm gonna be super annoying. Uh, and eventually they let me empty the garbages. So I went from Over the years, she's worked her way up through the ranks. She hopes to attain her dream of becoming first director this year. Did you have any doubts like when you graduated and came up here and you ended up, you know, emptying oh, garbage yeah. cans initially? Absolutely. Every day. And? Um, what did it turn for you? I don't know if it has. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's moments in time, you know, when, when you're on a film set and you've been there for 17 hours and you're freezing at minus 42 degree weather outside and you're just like, why have I made this life decision? But once you're bitten by the bug, you can't do anything else. Explain that bug. There's a high yeah. to making a movie. Um, you start off with like, okay, we've got this project. You read this script. You're not really sure how it's gonna go. You've got 15 days to shoot this whole movie. And you're like, oh God, you know, this is a mountain or, you know, that you're gonna have to tackle. My mom always says, you know, how do you eat an elephant? And that's one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of start chomping away at it. And by the end of it, you're just like, wow, what a cool project we've done. What a cool movie that we've done. And you can't wait to see it. And I think that we're the only industry that actually throws a party and celebrates every time we finish a movie and now we're unemployed again. They're finding they're not unemployed for long. More movies are being shot in Ottawa, the Ottawa Cruise in demand. Ah, it's great. Um, this year is really good so far. Yeah. We, it's only June and we're, we've done four movies already. Usually we don't see that until about September. So it looks like we're gonna double up this year and do more and more. We're hoping to have the winter off just because it's freezing, but odds are we're gonna be working, which is not a bad thing. So what ultimately is your goal then? Um, I write still, mm -hmm. just like I did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I still write. Um, and I have one that's in pre-development with my partner uh, who's from Toronto, Leighton Morrison. Um, he's been in the business for about 40 years and we've been working on this script. It's, it's taken us seven years to get it to the point where it's like, okay, we can make this movie. When do you think we could see it or do you... Do you Oh gosh, I'm hoping we're actually not, we're going to go to camera next year. Yeah. So that takes quite a while to do. So mine won't come out as quickly as these other ones. Um, no Escape Room should be out by the mm -hmm. end of the year, the one we just shot. Okay. Um, and it says on the screen, Tara Lee Gerhardt's yeah. assistant director. Second assistant director. That's what is right. that like when you see that? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It used to be that we would have to sit like and watch the credits for yeah. a half an hour <laughs> for like my little name to roll up, you know, like yeah. uh, at the bottom of the screen. And my mom would sit there and wait patiently just to see my name. Now it's like, okay, credits are rolling up. Oh, there I am. We don't, oh. we don't have to wait very long now. But I still wait to look at my friends' names on the screen. It's always fun. Um, advice for someone who might think that, you know, they would love to do this, but it's, there's no chance that they ever could, could achieve it. What, what would you say? Well, they can achieve it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the first thing is like, don't get it out of your head that you're not going to achieve it. Just go ahead and do it. It may not be for you. You might get on set and go, ah, this is a lot of work. Um, it but really, it is a lot of work. It's a it, lot of work. And, and people think it's glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. Usually by the end of the show, I have to sleep for three days. 
um, yeah, sometimes at the end of the week, you do your total of your hours and you've worked 86 hours in one week, you know? So if you don't love it, you're not going to be there. And you get paid for 86 hours? You get paid, yeah. Will we get paid our daily rates? Um, mm -hmm. Our rates are determined by the different unions at the different tiers and levels that we're shooting. Uh, so we do get paid well. We do get overtime uh, depending on what our hourly contracts are. But guaranteed, you can plan to be there for 15 hours a day minimum. you got to love it. You have to love it. If you don't love it, you're not going to do it. It was a pleasure speaking with you. All you the too. Best. I, I can't wait to uh, see your name, and I will be looking for it. I can't wait for you to come and join us on set. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. What do you come think? and hang out? What do you think? Let's put Norm? your chair by the monitor. Do you think I could be on camera in a movie? Well, you're on camera right now. <laughs> Tara, Tara Lee, thank, thank you so much. Uh, all the best. My pleasure. Okay. Cheers.